it may take time it is possible to heal completely and if you focus on valuing yourself and understanding that what happened to you is not who you are and it's really what who you are is based on the decisions that you've made and the choices that you make going forward and in doing that and focusing on yourself and focusing on your healing you can be healed there is a light at the end of the tunnel Aziza Kabibi survived more than 17 years of abuse from her father that resulted in procreating four children by him. It started out as one big happy family who lived in New Jersey in a huge home that her grandmother purchased when she migrated from England. Aziza started witnessing her mom being physically and mentally abused by her father. He later adopted the polyamorous lifestyle and that upset her grandparents and caused more tension in the family. Aziza didn't grow up around other children because she was homeschooled. Therefore, her social skills were not developed. Her nine-year-old birthday changed her life forever. This was when he touched her and she knew it was wrong. But because it was her father, she let it go. This was his way of teaching Aziza how to be a woman. He proceeded to tell her that all fathers did that to their daughters. Aziza closed her eyes and focused on her little pony in order to have good thoughts. Afterwards, Aziza was told never to tell anyone, including her mom, and that's exactly what she did. He'd perform different acts on Aziza. And at the age of 10, he told her mom and justified the abuse by saying it was helping her health. Aziza's father's girlfriend would also participate during these acts. Her mom eventually found out and confronted her father and he beat her with a belt and she never confronted him again. Aziza got pregnant at 14 by her father. His girlfriend asked if the baby would be deformed. Something her father didn't think about, and he became very angry. She didn't have any health issues that we could see. She was not deformed like my my father's girlfriend said that she might be. And after he saw that, he decided that it was ordained by God that he continued to breed me, continued to make children because the human race was... Um, face an extinction and it would be his blue blood children that would repopulate at 21 this was a part of life and normalcy for aziza's sister and herself at one point aziza and her sister were pregnant at the same time once when her older brother came to visit her son had a seizure and that prompted them to go to the hospital this is when social services got involved and this basically was a blessing in disguise for everyone. So some of the information had asked for my parents' information and also my child's parents' information. And I put him down as both. So that raised the red flag for the social worker at the hospital. So she came and interviewed me. The social worker was transparent that she visited the home. And this is when state social services, they got involved. My father threatening me, but then this woman wanted to take my children away. And, it, and then she's decided to, she did tell my father that she needed to come to the house. She got information about how many other children were at the house. She went to the house. And the next time she came back and spoke to me... Aziza's kids were removed from the toxic situation, but she remained at home alone with her siblings. Older now, Aziza stood up to her father when she witnessed him going into her sister's room. The next morning, her dad left, and that's when they went to take a warrant out on him. They found him in 2006 while he was on bail, almost a year later. It was now the time to take this man down. He came into court with his 18-month-old child. Let's listen to this video. 
part of the conditions of his bail was that he could not be around children. He showed up with, I guess, his most recent child, who was eight months, 18 months old. And the judge arrested him on the spot. And they put him in jail with, I, th I think it was a, a million dollar bail, which he wasn't able to pay. And he stayed there until his first trial. Since the trial and years later of healing, Aziza has put herself through college. She's got her kids back from the state. She's written a book. She also speaks on abuse. Aziza has a nonprofit organization, and the list goes on. And again, this is a reminder. It may take time. It is possible to heal completely. And if you focus on valuing yourself and understanding that what happened to you is not who you are, and it's really what who you are is based on the decisions that you've made and the choices that you make going forward. And in doing that and focusing on yourself and focusing on your healing, you can be healed. There is a light at the end of the tunnel. If you're still here, thank you so much for listening. And I hope this was motivation for you. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.